you so much, Sindhu, for joining us at 100 Women of Impact. I know you don't need any introduction, but for our audience, just wanted to share with you. Sindhu has more than 20 years of experience with SAP Labs, and she is right now currently Senior Vice President and Managing Director, navigating several strategic leadership roles. She is also serving on the boards of multiple organizations like Qualtrics, Titan Company, Reloop, and also she is re-elected as a NASCOM Executive Council, Council for the second consecutive term. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, Sindhu. Looking forward to a very impactful conversation in the next few minutes. Thank you so much, Sarika, and it's great to be here. And I, like I mentioned earlier on, uh, there's never enough of doing more of these kind of series. So I'm grateful to you for driving this forward for all the men and women out there. No? Thank you so much, Sindhu. Sindhu, we'll jump right into some questioning over here. And, you know, I have been very um, amazed with the way your careers have spanned. And trust me on this when I say that, uh, we stalk you at, on Twitter and social media. There are many of our listeners who also do so, and they learn so much from that. I was just wondering how, the kind of travel you do, the kind of different work you do. How do you keep up with the energy of doing so much? Yeah, that's a great question, right? Um, I think fundamentally, Sarika, if you ask me, um, as long as you're having fun doing what you do, it, it doesn't matter, right? Uh, and that's that's important for me. I have to really enjoy what I do. Um, and if travel comes along or um, long schedules, being at the workplace or at home doesn't matter, right? Great. And so, the, you know, you have spent so many, couple of more than a couple of decades in SAP and you rose through the ranks, you went through different departments. What have you learned through this remarkable journey over there at SAP? And why just SAP and not any other industry or any other organization? Yeah, I can. If I look back at um, my journey at SAP, Sarika, I can only tell you that uh, it's been um, the culture that we share at SAP, right? Let's start from that. Um, it's it's a culture where really each one, each one of us can bring up the best to the workplace and become the best version of ourselves. That's a culture that we that we have. And um, and if I look back at, at my journey, though, I mean, many people ask, hey, that's a long time to be in, in one organization. And I say, yeah, but each day is a learning opportunity, right? Um, and if you just look at also from a pure business point of view, Sarika, and if you just look at the kind of portfolio that SAP uh, as an organization supports, right? Um, it's a very varied portfolio, right? It's very, in terms of supporting businesses out there. I mean, we are looking at various parts, be it areas like how are we supporting organizations run their HR functions, or if you look at their sales functions or their commerce functions, or you look at uh, areas around networks or um, a topic which is very close to my heart, sustainably, uh, sustainability. Um, so in that sense as well, purely wearing my business hat on, the opportunities are immense, right? So it, it's really up to you how you bring in the learnings from one part of the organization into another. I've held several roles at um, uh, at SAP and each time it's a, it's a journey in itself. Thank you so much for sharing that. Sindhu, just quickly another moving from here. You were one of the first woman leader at SAP. And... Mm -hmm. And, and with your success and journey, you've created so many, I would say, inspiring so many women out there as a role model. Just share maybe one or two such challenges which you've faced through this journey, maybe at SAP, maybe in the ecosystem, maybe around you. Uh, because I do understand that it's just not about being successful. It's about all the challenges or all the mistakes or all the things which you learn along, along with it. Yeah, I mean... Um... Rightly so, uh, Sarika, because um, whether we like it or not, I mean, if you still look at the tech space, right, uh, it's still a very male-dominated space, right? So there's no no question about it. Uh, there's, uh, I'm so grateful that here at SAP here in India, we are talking about what 34% of our workforce being women, right? We are gunning towards being 50%, 50 so it's a journey that we are on. Um, but if you look at the tech space in general, many organizations have to get to those. Um, I mean, it, it is still quite quite a 
male dominated industry for for decades right and um and women of course face that right and uh, but i think what is more important to to think about is when you are in a position you need to make sure that you help make things better for the coming generations right so that is important and i think that's a responsibility that we all share to make sure that we set up the right environment for women and it doesn't matter it's in your organization or or, or beyond we need to make sure that we move that uh, the needle so that uh, they don't have to go through the similar kind of a, a journey because women need to have those environments where they can thrive and become the best version of themselves. And when you talk about creating that right environment, um, uh, Sarika, it's of course multiple things, right? It can start with fundamental things like pay equity, um, flexible work options, again, very important. But would love you to talk uh, maybe one or two anecdotes or stories which you felt more as a woman leader as opposed to a business leader, where you felt at that point of time, gender was not on your right side or the situation was not on your right side and how you dealt with it. Because sometimes by sharing some of these examples and these situations, um, women actually feel a lot more empowered to understand how they can deal with these difficult situations. Yeah, there are many we would, but I can, one but that comes to my mind, uh, Sarika, is, is probably something that many women have gone through. So I wouldn't say it's it's in that sense unique. This was back in my times in the headquarters um, and we were um, having this very prominent uh, customer that we've all been working towards making sure that it was a great um, uh, session. Of course, it was very much focused on the kind of technology that we were building um, and all of that. And I still remember this day where we were walking into this um, large, it was large boardroom. We had all the top guys from their side, customer side, our side, and just walked in. And I was like, okay, um, kind of um, when do we get started? And and there were all these um, from the customer side, I won't name the customer, like, okay, so where where is the 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 expert who is going to talk to us right and it's like I'm standing right here in front of you and they and you could see that um a visible sense of uh, oh okay uh, that's interesting kind of uh, an expression um and I could I know it as women we all all kind of immediately feel that right um so it's it's not spoken but it's felt um we feel that. <laughs> yeah but Sarika I think what turned around that entire kind of mood in the room is once you start talking and once you kind of really get across your point of view and and get, and and there is absolutely no doubt who's the expert in the room right and this goes back to my earlier point on putting your heart and soul into what you do because if you have to stand there and kind of own that space the only way you can do it is by doing your homework right Quickly jumping to yet another thing. I was very in, fascinated with this term technology humanist. Mm -hmm. um, and though you write in your resume technology humanist and would love to understand a bit more about it. What What's the, what's the philosophy of that? No, I think I touched upon it in your earlier question as well. When you asked me about is would tech, tech be still your kind of uh, dream area to work in? Um, and, and Sarika, having spent, what, two decades, more than two decades in technology, uh, like I said, right, I'm a very firm believer, right, that technology should be developed and used in a way that serves uh, humanity, right? Um, because I, I think there's so many things that we see around us, um, or even if you look at it purely from a business point of view, right? Uh, but let me take a concrete instance um, during the pandemic, right? I think we, we had very dire times during the pandemic here in India as compared to several other parts of the world. I think um, the way people bounced back, kudos, resilience, no doubt. But during the thors of the pandemic, if you remember, um, Sarika, one of the biggest challenges that we, the even the government of India was facing was the whole visibility of the oxygen supply chain, right? And here mm -hmm. again, um, what we did is given that 80% of the largest oxygen manufacturers here in India run on SAP, we had put together what we call as a, 
kind of a um, uh, tech task force for COVID, right? And we said, hey, how do we solve this problem now? And we very quickly, given that 80% of the oxygen manufacturers were running on SAP, we built this integration into the government of India's oxygen digital tracking dashboard. And that was built like, again, leveraging the power of technology, right? And that was a concrete example of how we use technology to serve humanity when it was most needed, right? And giving the government that visibility on where it was and how quickly, again, going back to my example on supply chain rerouting, here it was rerouting the, the logistics network around these oxygen suppliers. So, um, yeah, truly, I think I, I truly believe that there's a very strong interlock between technology and uh, serving humanity. You know, you have been a long-standing ally of LGBTQ community and you yeah. hold the title of a people leader. What do you think, how do you think the awareness about diversity and inclusion can be spread from the educational years itself in the youth? And this is to address all those young listeners we have in the audience today. Yeah. Yeah, multiple things, um, Sarika, because um, we live also in a very complex society, right? I mean, there's, uh, again, given it's a interlock of different backgrounds, cultures, traditions, I mean, um, it's also important that when we talk about um, inclusion and really inclusion in its true self, a lot boils down into the education that we get in the schools right? How is it to interact with people from different backgrounds, right? So I think you have to create those opportunities right from the beginning. Also workshops and trainings, because also educators, right, need to make sure that they have that right thinking, because if you're imparting that to young educate students. Educate the educators. As yes, they say. educate the educators, right? Because you never know who each one's journey is different and which has shaped Mind how them. they think. But it's very important that as they educate the young uh, um, ones, that they are also educated in the right way, irrespective of what they might. So this is very, very important because that true respect and appreciation and valuing diversity has to come from yourself. And that needs to be imparted to and students. The younger, and the younger you catch them, they're like clay. You can mold them the way you want to. I remember yes. my son... I was going for my Aadhaar card, uh, you know, verification. My son was also there. He was around seven or eight years old. And there was a column for third gender. And he asked me this question, you have a male and female. What do you mean by third gender? That was an opportunity for me to make to him aware and yes. talk about this, uh, you know, about different gender and the preferences and, and it's okay. And how he, and he simply accepted it like it's a norm. And that's yeah. what is it's all about because it's you talk about it in general as a normal process. They take yes. it like fish to the water. Beautifully said on that. So thank you so much, uh, Sindhu. You know, you spoke about hiring the right team, investing in them, mentoring them, guiding them, and make them come together, believing in the right passion and purpose and the mission of the organization. I think these are like, I would say golden words said thank you so much for your time and having a conversation with us and Absolutely. looking forward to hosting you on the campus soon as well thank you so much Sindhu thank you thanks so much Sarika and definitely looking forward to also having you here at Labs India in Definitely. Bangalore.